Your attention, masters, mistresses. All systems functional for the Everything Geek podcast. Hey, this is Rich McDonald, and I play Commander David Mason on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And you're listening to Everything Geek Podcast. It's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Pro Cool in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Everything Geek, the podcast. Hey, it's Leif Gamfert. I played Uncle Ben's killer in The Amazing Spider-Man, and you're listening to... The Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldovar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast, bringing you interviews from your favorite films and TV shows every week, and all of the latest news. Here's your host, Rory Williamson. Hello everyone, you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Rory, and joining me today is a very special guest. We have actress Lori Himes, who stars as the voice of Lily in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Her other notable roles include Sarah in Yu-Gi-Oh! The Dark Side of Dimensions, Saya in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5, Mabel, Rally, Moria, and Poke Ride Pelipper in Pokemon, Vicky Broomstick in Regal Academy, and Elisa in Elisa Knows What to Do. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, you covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a good range of roles there for sure. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Oh, thanks for having me. So getting right to my questions for you, Laurie, um, for some of our listeners who may not be familiar with your background, can you tell us how you got into acting? Um, yeah, I did mostly musical theater growing up. Um, I did a show when I was eight years old and had one line and got a laugh and told my mom I was going to be an actor forever, much to her horror. Um, and uh, I did musical theater through college and when I first moved to New York. And then um, a couple of friends of mine had started doing voiceover. And theater work was really hard to come by starting in around 2008. And so I just started taking some classes and meeting casting directors and directors. And then it all kind of right place, right time fell into my lap. That's really interesting. And you know, if your mom's horrified, then you're doing something right. (laughs) She was very, very supportive. But, you know, when your child's like, I want to be an actor at eight years old, you're like, oh, no. (laughs) But she she was always supportive of me. <laughs> well, that's that's the best you can ask for, really. You know, a supportive parent. Um, you know, my mum was horrified when I said that I want to be a journalist. Well, my, <laughs> my field is more radio journalism and hers is, you know, written. But, uh, like, she was horrified because she, she wasn't yeah. sure about it, but she was supportive. Um, yeah. So kind of similar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can you tell us how you were originally cast in Pokemon? Yeah, actually, like I was saying, that was kind of um, how it fell into my lap. I had taken a class with the director of Yu-Gi-Oh, actually. And uh, the director of Pokemon at the time had emailed him and said, Hey, I need new female voices. Do you know anybody? And I had just taken, just met him. So he sent my information along and I... I went in and um, I uh, got cast in, actually Elisa was the first thing I got cast in. And then he brought me in to do Moria on Pokemon. Um, And that was the very first time I ever recorded any kind of animation. Um, So he just wanted to give me like just one episode to kind of get going and, and teach me a couple of things before we went into recording an entire series. So, yeah, Moria was my very first voiceover experience. (laughs) Yeah, it's really cool. And uh, this is actually funny for me because I remember, because I really liked that episode. And, you know, I really pay attention to, um, 
you know, cast members that are either, like, main cast, supporting cast, or just in episodes that I really like, even if it's just one episode. So I had been actually trying to contact you since the episode, and oh, it, did, oh. it didn't work somehow. Um, but, uh, yeah, then it's so fake to think that Perfect. now. To think that now, like, a few years after, like, I mean, you've got, like, you're a lead on Pokemon now. You've had... <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a role in the new Yu-Gi-Oh movie, uh, now in the current Yu-Gi-Oh show, a few other Pokemon roles. It's just so funny how things change in like two years or so. Yeah, a lot has happened actually since then, so it's, it's better, better interview now. <laughs> For sure. Good things come to those who wait. <laughs> yes, who wait and work hard. There you go. Yeah, it was definitely a really cool first step we all to get on Pokemon, though. Yeah, it was awesome. It was really fun, and they it taught me a lot. And, I mean, you get to battle your very first, you know, job was pretty fun. So <laughs> Definitely. Were you a fan of the show before being cast in it? I would not say I was a fan. I mean, I knew of it. I was already in high school, but when it first came out showing my age um and so i was kind of past the the time when people were watching pokemon um when it first started so i knew of it but i didn't really know a lot about it um until i moved to new york and uh a lot of uh, heard a lot of actors were working on it and i was like oh okay so um, I, I didn't really have too much information on it, other than I knew it existed. <laughs> Fair enough, that's still a good thing, that's not a bad thing at all. <laughs> I love it now! <laughs> yeah, that's the important thing, of course. Um, now, Lily is a very interesting character on Pokemon, because obviously she was afraid of touching Pokemon, and there's different interactions with them compared to other characters. What were you told about Lily's character when you originally booked the role? Um, I wasn't told much, and honestly, they're still keeping lots of secrets from me, um, which is great. Uh, they told me that she was really intelligent, um, that she read a lot, but she wasn't um, snotty about it or a know-it-all. She just was very smart, and that she was afraid. She loved Pokemon, was afraid to touch them, but we don't know why. And I said, I said oh, okay. <laughs> so um, that was that was all the information that I got. <laughs> and you built a whole character around that. Not yeah. much at all. <laughs> no, and it's it's fun. As some of the other actors know, I'm actually very allergic to cats and dogs. So uh, we have something in common. <laughs> I really like animals, but I can't touch them. So, uh, it, there's a little bit of typecasting going on with Lily. <laughs> For sure, there really is. Like, that that's like, that's one of the best things I've ever heard. Like, that's like one of the greatest trivia things of all time. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Oh, just so turns out that Lily's actress can't touch animals either. Who would have guessed? <laughs> can't do it. I know. It was very, when we first started recording, I was like, this is interesting. Hmm. <laughs> That's like crazy. That that can't be a coincidence. Surely someone, someone must have known you on, and working on Pokemon and just you know been like, let's give yeah. her the character that can't touch animals. They just knew. They could hear it in my voice. I don't know. <laughs> That is insane. That's that's one of the best things I think I've ever heard on my podcast. <laughs> that's just yeah. so weird. <laughs> well, not weird that you're allergic to animals. I mean, people are allergic to different things. I'm terrible in the summer. I can't stand pollen. So, you know. Oh, yeah. I'm there too. For sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, now, the most recent episode of Sun and Moon, the all raise and switch, showed Lily finally being able to touch a Pokemon other than Snowy, which was Pikachu. Personally, it's one of my favorite episodes of Sun and Moon so far, and I thought the Pikachu Lily scenes were fantastic. What was it like recording this episode? Um, I was just really glad that it was Pikachu was the next 
Pokemon I was able to touch because in some of the earlier episodes when Ash is trying to help Lily, you know, get better, it's Pikachu that's there trying, you know, to help along. Um, so that was kind of neat to be able to to do that. And those those episodes are really fun because Lily's facial expressions are hilarious and the way she like screams and backs away and then comes forward, you know, and she's trying to like make it work for herself. Those are really fun to play with to see like, okay, that's the face that she's making. What noise am I going to (laughs) make to match what's going on (laughs) in her mind? Um, So it it was really fun to like be able to explore that. And um, she always overcomes it. Yeah, definitely. And, it's really great that you bring up, you know, Pikachu as well, because like you said, Pikachu was there when Ash was trying to help her in previous episodes, but also because, you know, Pikachu, of course, has been with Ash for a long time, and, you know, it, he's met many of Ash's previous companions, but I'd almost say, aside from Misty, the original, like, I mean, the other female companions would have, like, moments of Pikachu and scenes but won't be anything quite like this you know Lily having the Lily looking after Pikachu for a weekend you know having that interaction bonding like that I really think we haven't seen that before aside from maybe with Misty in terms of the previous companions so I thought that was really great it's neat because the kids because they're in school for this season so they're learning lots of things so it kind of sets up those situations that maybe we normally haven't been able to see with them. So it's fun. Definitely. And did you find yourself really getting invested in Lily's desire to overcome her fear in touching Pikachu? Yeah, I love Lily. I think, I think she's my favorite character I've ever done. Um, just because she's so determined and she's, uh, really really helpful and cares about everybody so so much even though clearly there's a lot that's happened in her life um she basically lives in a mansion all by herself with you know her best friend is Hobbs so um she could be jaded she could be angry um you know upset with her situation but she's not So um, it's fun to be able to play someone that's got all of these things that have happened to her, but she's still really positive and determined to accomplish what she wants to accomplish. She also has a brother that doesn't talk to her. (laughs) I know, it's so sad. (laughs) I know, hopefully we'll be learning more about him soon. Yeah, question number one, why won't you talk to Lily? (laughs) I know, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully we'll find out why soon enough. Um, have you enjoyed getting to develop Lily over the course of Sun and Moon so far? Yeah, it's one of the um, characters I've been like gotten to spend a lot of time with. Um, Elisa I got to spend a lot of time with. Um, but before that, it was really more guest spots. So you kind of don't really you know, your arc is really short. Like, you only have one, you know, to three episodes to develop something. And, I mean, Lily's still going. You know, it's going to be ongoing. Um, So it's kind of something new to discover all the time, which is exciting because that doesn't always happen. And, you know, it's already been animated. Um, So a lot of it's been chosen for you, but they're really great about letting us throw our own, like, you know, emotions into it and what how, how we're feeling about the character. So... I just love her. She's so cute. (laughs) And she dresses really well. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) For sure. Uh, Than I do in real life. (laughs) (laughs) more. I'm sure that's not true at all. (laughs) It is. (laughs) Okay, okay. I'll take your word for it. Um, (laughs) Now, earlier this year, you had a really nice role as Sarah in Yu-Gi-Oh! The Dark Side of Dimensions. Um, It obviously featured the return of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! cast. A lot of fans were really excited for it. What was it like working on the film? It was really cool. Um, That, uh, like I said, that director was the one who kind of 
uh, handed me over to Pokemon years ago. Um, so it was the first time I got to actually work with him and got hired to be in a show because I'd auditioned for Yu-Gi-Oh! before. Um, so that was really cool. And it was one of those where any, anybody out there that wants to do voiceover, my audition I felt horrible about. I was like, well, I really blew that. That's not going to happen. And then got cast. So um, that was really cool. And uh, it, it was fun. You know, we record by ourselves, so I didn't really get to see anybody while we were recording the movie. Um, I didn't even know exactly who was coming back uh, until the premiere when we saw everybody afterwards. So that was kind of neat to, because we don't meet each other very often, unless you were passing recording times, we actually don't see each other. So um, it was cool. It was my first movie. It was the first time I've heard myself on a big screen before. Um, it was our first like little red carpet. Um, so it was really neat. And uh, Sarah's cool. She's cool. So it was fun. Was that a little bit intimidating for you, considering it was your first red carpet experience? You know, by then, uh, my um, friend Allie Rosenfeld, uh, who's also voiced a lot of stuff, as you know, um, she was going as well. So <laughs> I was like, I'll meet you there, and then we'll, we'll go together. Um, and my husband was with me as well. So that, you know, was nice to have around. And um, they were so sweet, and, you know, everybody was just so excited to see it. So it ended up being, it was so much fun. It was great. Definitely, and isn't that just the thing in acting, isn't it? Like, I've talked to a few people who also have felt they've blown auditions before in the past. Isn't that just the thing where sometimes you think you did really badly, but the, you know, casting people actually thought it was pretty good and you get cast anyway? Yeah, and you just, uh, the nice thing about voiceover is it's just someone listening to voices in a room, so it's, you don't feel, like, rejected as a human. <laughs> it's just your voice didn't sound right and that's fine you know there's nothing I I can't do anything about that so oh well moving on um so that part's easy but uh you know it's it's just one of those things you just never know <laughs> no you weren't really a fan of Pokemon before were you a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh before the film oh gosh your fans are gonna hate me I did not know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh I really like I did not know, and I think part of it is I didn't, my brother wasn't into any of that kind of stuff. He wasn't a video game person or that kind of cartoon person. It was very much a sports household. I mean, me being an actor was weird to everybody, um, so I just didn't grow up around it at all. Um, it wasn't something I was ever really introduced to, so um, it's been cool. Like, I'm learning as I go, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, that's the best way to learn, of course. Yeah. Now, as well as currently portraying Lily in Pokemon, you're also currently playing Saya in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. One of the most recent episodes of the show, Fighting for Friendship, revealed that she blames herself for Lulu being taken by Duel Academy, but in the most recent episode, Bells and Whistles, it showed her dueling alongside Alan to overcome her fear of facing Duel Academy. What is it like being playing Saya so far? Um, Sai is great. Uh, I get to play some really nice people. <laughs> I've known, like, that's really exciting. Um, Sai was fun. Uh, it, I actually got cast in that almost, like, two weeks after the movie premiered, so I was really excited to keep being a part of the family. Um, and I, it's fun to play someone more reserved and kind of shy, I do a lot of crying on that show, <laughs> um, but battling was awesome. I had never battled in Yu-Gi-Oh before, ever, so that was really cool, and to battle as someone that's um, more reserved and not used to it and scared of it was an interesting way to, take, to go from that point of view, um, but it was cool. It was fun. You get into it when you get to battle. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's Yu-Gi-Oh battling, you know, shouting out monster attacks. You just get into it, like. Yeah, yeah. They they have long battles. <laughs> yeah, that, Lots of yelling. Yeah, that must be pretty exhausting with all the yelling, you know, in the recording booth. 
Yeah, they usually try to save the yelling till the end of the session so <laughs> that you're not too tired. Um, but I'm, I have a pretty loud voice, so I tend to have to back away <laughs> from the mic a lot <laughs> and go to the back of the room. Um, but it's really fun. It's, I mean, we all have a good time doing it. That's really great. Which would you say has been the most challenging role in your career so far? Um, uh, probably, it's a toss-up between Lily and Elisa. Elisa was challenging just because it was the, really the first part I've ever done, which was, it's a lot to, to handle. She's in almost every minute of every episode. Um, but Lily was harder vocally to get. Like, I didn't hook into her right away. It took it took a few episodes to, you know, be able to be like, I don't need a reference. I got this now. This is in this is in my body. Um, so that one vocally was the hardest for me. Because as you see, I don't really sound like her. Um, so it, it took a while, but now she's in there. It, I can I can get into her, and especially when you're playing a range of, you know, I play lots of girls from like eight years old to 13. It's not like a, a big range. So who am I today? What's the voice again? Where does that sit? Okay, there we are <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but I think Lily's, I mean, she's my favorite. So <laughs> it's definitely, um, I think it's going to get more challenging with what it looks like might be coming up. Maybe. <laughs> Trust me, I actually really know nothing. They don't tell me anything. <laughs> that didn't sound like you know nothing. <laughs> I really don't. I mean, uh, they. The I found out I had a brother the day I recorded that episode. Okay. I did not know, which helps with my acting. You know, like I, they don't tell me anything ahead of time. So, I just imagine many things are coming up. Yeah, I was just joking with you anyway. I know I know even if you didn't know you couldn't tell me. I just don't I just don't like it when guests tease me. <laughs> <laughs> I promise it's not a tease, I know nothing. <laughs> okay, I'll accept that answer. <laughs> um now my final question for you, Laurie, aside from the ongoing Pokemon Sun and Moon and Yu Gi Oh Arc Five, do you have any upcoming acting roles or any other projects you would like to talk about? Um there's a couple I can't talk about. <laughs> um, but when I can I can shoot you an email and tell you what they are. Um the Regal Academy is gonna have a season two. Um, and we're working on that right now. And I will be on season three of Robo Carpoli, which is a cartoon on Netflix. Um, and, uh, I don't know if it's anywhere other than the internet, but, um, the Snow Queen 3 movie. Um, so I'm not sure what's happening with that, but I was listed on it, so I assume it's okay. <laughs> it's out there. <laughs> Yeah, let's hope anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, now, but before I let you go, Laurie, we also have a few listener questions for you as well. Um, so, retro pokey fan from YouTube would like to know. It's funny because you just mentioned that role just there. You've re so, retro pokey fan would like to know. You've recently been in the Snow Queen free with Dee Bradley Baker. How is that like, and what is it? How does it feel to work with LA actors? Um, I actually didn't really get to work with them. Um, we recorded separately. Uh, so we, those of us that were in New York, we recorded, and um, so we don't. It's I know it's kind of ruining the magic. I feel like <laughs> really the only people I recorded with. Um, were Jason Griffiths, who played my brother, and uh, Billy Thompson, who plays Orm, and Graham Halstead, who played Roland. So those are the only people I actually was physically in a room with recording. Um, but everybody sounds great on it. I wish <laughs> I wish I could tell you. Um, but from the clips that I've seen and stuff that I've seen, everybody sounds awesome, and it looks real. The animation's really cool. But um, yeah, we re we don't really get to meet each other. Um, so, sorry. <laughs> uh, the, the Miller Wireless, also from YouTube, would like to know, what is it like voice acting as Lily? Um, it's really fun. Uh, 
she, like I said, her range of emotions, she's like zero to 60. Um, so it, for me, uh, usually I'll go in and I, I'll, I'll see a script and Lily screams 18 different ways during this <laughs> episode. So for her, it's, it's been actually really fun to, to figure out what her noises are. <laughs> um, and a lot of times when everybody will react to one thing, her face will look totally different than everybody else's because she's, you know, got her hangups. Um, so it's been really fun to like discover what her different little nervous tics are um, and how they sound based on nerves or fear or excitement. And um, cause she's just, I mean, the animation for her is just so active and exciting. So figuring out her, what her little habits are have been the most fun. And finally from our website, View Taylor would like to know what was it like recording both episodes fourteen and thirty of Sun and Moon, both episodes that are Lily centric where Lily becomes able to touch certain Pokemon, fourteen being Snowy and thirty being Pikachu. Yeah, I mean I love Snowy. It's like he's the cutest Pokemon I think ever, in my opinion, but that might just be me. Um that was fun because, like I said, they don't tell me anything. So uh, we're we're, uh, we're recording, and oftentimes we'll do more than one episode in one session. So they start to run together, and I'm like, wait, which is which is which? And so I did not know that by the end of the episode, I was going to be able to touch Snowy. So that was kind of cool. Like as I was recording. I was like, oh, oh, we, we're friends now. Yay! <laughs> like, it was it was really cool. Um, so we kind of, my director and I, we both love Lily. So we, we got a little teary. It was very exciting. <laughs> That's a really great answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of our questions for you today, Laurie. It's been a pleasure talking to you on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome, and hopefully we can do it again sometime. That would be great. When I when I can announce those other things, I'll let you know. <laughs> great stuff. I'll look forward to receiving that email. Um, <laughs> so thanks again for joining us today, and take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Pokemon Sun and Moon airs every Saturday on Disney XD. Time to wrap up today's show. Make sure to check out our podcast links. Check out our website, website.effythinggeekpodcast.com slash EGP. Check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash effythinggeekpodcast. Check out our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash user slash effythinggeekcast. Check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash effythinggeekp. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash official podcast. Check out our Mixcloud profile, www.mixcloud.com slash podcast. Email us at the following email, podcast at gmail.com. Check out our companion podcast, Comicast www.facebook.com slash effythinggeekcomiccast Make sure to check out the host's YouTube channels. Mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash septusdestroyers Check out Laurie Himes's website laurieheims.com and check out channel 1138 where we broadcast live from www.channel1138.com Geeks out, everyone. Oh, I mean, it, you love it. You love it when people, especially with a community of fans like like Pokemon has, um, they're so they're so committed, and they've a lot of them have been watching for so long that it's really nice to know. Oh, I was doing commercial voiceover work, and she uh, she asked me if I was uh, intri- if I was still doing voiceover work and I hadn't done it in at least two years, but I lied and said, absolutely, I'm always doing voiceover work. And